Okay, last video for this kind of little section on pathogens is the one about non-cellular pathogens. Um, so just like before, you should have broken it up into two sections, the virus and the prion. They're the bits that you need to know. If you wanna jot down anything else, about them as we go through them. You're more than welcome. Might be a good idea to jot down one or two examples of them. I mean, viruses, we're not at lack of remembering which one is a virus at the moment, considering that's the reason I'm talking to you through a machine. Um, so really good TED talk, but in particular, he, ha he does a little bit of a section. He's a bit of a, he's an educator. Um, I might link to it and see if I can put it in the playlist where I chop to the bit, but it's not compulsory watching, but he tells you a story of how viruses work. So it starts off with a cell and the cell doesn't feel so good. And then all of a sudden the cell ends up starting to split apart at the sides and something out comes out. And then all of a sudden the bacteria is so filled up, that cell is so filled up that it bursts completely. And that's where your all viruses come out. And this is meant to be a story about, and I didn't tell it anywhere near as nicely as what he did because I've done it really fast here. But this is what viruses do. Viruses inject their nucleic acid. So that could be RNA, that could be DNA. So for example, COVID or coronavirus, COVID-19 is an RNA virus. So it injects its RNA into your cells. It then hijacks the cells to make copies. And eventually, eventually the cells burst and release all of these viruses. And then they can go off viruses released and then they can go off and infect other cells. So they're pretty good at doing that. So they inject their DNA, hijack the cell to make copies of themselves, uh, burst out of them and then go and can infect a whole bunch of other cells. So these guys are really small. So the thing, the biggest distinction between the non-cellular, so this is what goes on your thing, non-cellular and your cellular pathogens, is that these guys are much smaller. Think about it, if you've got a cell, you're gonna be quite large. If you are small, if you are not even a cell, if you are a virus, then you have even less space to take up. So you're very, very tiny. So these guys are acellular. They are usually species specific. So a virus that infects a human won't infect your dog, which is why at the moment you don't have to worry about hugging your animals because your animals will not give the disease to, should not give the disease to you and should not, um, you shouldn't be able to contract it. Some of the data coming out is suggesting that um, COVID might be able to be transferred between species and that might make sense for its transmission. But it's not general. So if you get the flu, you can't give your dog the flu. That's a better example. So they cannot be treated by antibiotics. That's the sad thing. This is why we can't just take antibiotics and get rid of a virus. Um, the symptoms vary very widely and they occur in all of the kingdoms. So animals can get viruses, plants can get viruses, fungi can get viruses, protists and bacteria. So these three here, are pathogens in their own right, or can be pathogens, can be pathogens. And you can have a virus that infects the bacterium. Crazy. Um, so this is a generalized virus structure. This one I would like you to add to your mind map somewhere near virus. So the biggest thing is that they have this outside protein coat and it's protein coat surrounding a nucleic acid. So you don't need all this stuff about matrix. You don't need this stuff about capsins or envelopes, yeah? But the envelope uh, is made up of proteins. So it's protein coat, I guess you could create a protein coat or a protein envelope. So the two things you need to know about it is that they are a protein coat or an envelope surrounding a nucleic acid. And that nucleic acid 
could either be DNA or RNA. Here are some of the nasty diseases that you can get from viruses. They're pretty bad. So you've got things like influenza. So I'm hoping that most of you came in to get your flu shot. If you didn't get them at school, you could get them uh, at your GP or somewhere else. And that is caused by a virus. So we can't treat them with antibiotics, but we can prevent them with vaccination. And that's uh, part of this unit as well. We get to learn about that. There's another virus that you may have had called a cold sore. So if you ever get cold sores, uh, that's caused by the herpes simplex virus. Uh, funnily enough, it's a very similar virus in the same family as the one that causes genital herpes. But it's important to know that the virus that causes a cold sore is not the same as the one, not identical to the one that causes genital herpes. Um, you've got HIV and AIDS, which is another disease that we're going to come back to when we talk about um, malfunctions of the immune system because this one's particularly nasty with what it does to your immune system. Um, measles, smallpox and glandular fever. Uh, I'll come back to some of these later on and then I, how would I go anywhere without talking about this? So coronavirus is, uh, is a virus. It is an RNA virus. So you can see in the middle here is it's all its RNA and on the outside it's called, it's got all these proteins. Can you see how these proteins have got really big heads? Yeah, and the fact that they've got that big head, that is what corona stands for. Yeah, so the corona is the outside ring around the sun. So if you ever see a photograph of the sun and you see a little glowing ring around it, we call that the corona or the outside of the sun is called the corona. Um, and because these coronaviruses have these big heads on the ends of their protein coat, that's why we call them that because they have these big heads and the word for that is corona. So that's why we call them a coronavirus. Um, I'm going to link this video into the playlist. It would be really great if you could watch it. Again, the exam's been written. They're not going to include a question on coronavirus unless they decide to put it in. You never know, actually. They could put one in there because they've had to remove content. So maybe they're going to inject a question on this. Um, but it's a really good summary of what the coronavirus is and how it's transmitted. So while we're on our happy journey through pathogens, the last one I want to talk to you about are these guys. So these are the last non-cellular pathogen. These are prions. They are not even, they are not a cell. Yeah, so they have no cells. Tiny, tiny. If you're acellular or non-cellular, you get no cells. What they are is they're just single proteins and they kind of look a bit like this, yeah? So they just look like a protein. So that is your primary sequence of amino acids spun into alpha helices or folded into beta pleated sheets, then twisted around each other and ionic bonds and disulfide bridges and hydrogen bonds form its tertiary structure. And that's what you're looking at is just a protein. Now, the problem with a protein is that it's so small, it can get in everywhere. So we can't even see these with a microscope. No chance. And what they do is they cause all sorts of nasty diseases like this one. Now, the biggest one here is called Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Yes, I know how to speak that. Um, or CJD. So here is a normal healthy brain on the right. And if a prion manages to get into your brain, this is what it does. Essentially, it just rips around and tears apart your brain. Pretty nasty. It can also do that to sheep and it can cause scrapey. Um, it can cause chronic wasting disease. And the biggest one that you've probably heard of is one called mad cow disease. So when you go eventually one day and you decide to go traveling, um, and you decide to go to the UK or you come back or if you're donating blood like I suggested before They will ask you if you happened to be in the UK. I think it's prior to 1996 Now if you, you guys weren't born so that doesn't matter But if you did live in the UK prior to 1996 There is a chance that you could have mad cow disease You could be harboring those prions somewhere in your body Now the dangerous thing about a prion is we can't test for it so if we can't test for them, we cannot accept your blood. So people that lived in the UK for that certain period are not able to give blood ever 
just in case they've been harboring and hiding behind these prions. So they're pretty serious. Um, they are completely non-treatable, non-curable. If you get kutzfeldt jakob disease, uh, which is the human, so the human version of mad cow disease is called kutzfeldt jakob disease or CJD. And if you get that, then I'm sorry, that, that's it. Your brain is just going to slowly go to mush and you are going to turn into um, a crazy person. And on that very happy note, um, let's just see if we can have a really quick look. This is a great website. No, it's not going to let us. Oh, here we go. It is. This is a great website. You can play around with it. The, the PowerPoint is linked onto today's lesson. Um, and it's not going to work on here. So if you get a chance to play with that PowerPoint, I would suggest that you should because it's really fun and it goes up there. Now, the other thing is embedded in this PowerPoint, there are some also some other categories of disease, but these aren't on the study design, so I'm not gonna go through them now. So that is the end um, of my little section on non-cellular pathogens.